March has been quite eventful for me again. I am manifesting that for April I'll be able to just stay at home and study quietly my languages, learn new things. I mean, I did manifest for a quiet month of April. It's kind of what happened, so I could spend quite a lot of time with my languages this month. It was great. I'm taking the time to appreciate it because I never take it for granted. Minasan konnichiwa, Ari desu. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Ali and today we're doing my April language study recap. As usual, we start with the recap of my monthly goals for April. So I had two monthly goals for the month of April. The first one was to focus on no pressure immersion practice. And the second one was to finish the NHK textbook I was going through for Chinese. Regarding immersion practice first, my point here was that for the first three months or so of the year, I actually put immersion practice within my list of weekly goals to make sure I was doing it every single week. And by the end of March, I felt like I was adding just a little bit of unnecessary pressure to my weekly studying. So I just thought it was time to take a break from it and just leave these immersion goals out of my weekly study list, very simply. So I kept doing it. It doesn't mean that I stopped doing language immersion in April. It's just that I stopped writing it within my list of goals. So I just did it during the week whenever I felt like it. And if, for example, within a particular week of the month, I only wanted to focus on Russian listening immersion practice, I would do so. And the week after that, I would focus more on Chinese immersion practice. That's just an example of what I've been doing, but that was the main idea. I just kept it out of my weekly study list. It's just another example to show you guys that, you know, I always take time to assess what is still motivating me and what is adding unnecessary pressure on me and unnecessary pressure to my studying. And so in the first instance, I would keep anything that is fostering my motivation and I would leave out anything that is not anymore. So regarding this first goal, I think I did manage to complete it. So I was very successful here. Now, my second goal was to finish the NHK textbook for Chinese. I had been going through this textbook since April 2022, so exactly two years on and off. I did manage to complete it, so it felt like a very big achievement. And thanks to this, I got a lot of motivation. So I also managed to finish another textbook, which was not part of my monthly goals, but I also managed to finish the practice book from the Asimil collection for basic Russian. So in the end, I over completed this goal, 200% completed. All in all, it was a very successful month. I only had two monthly goals, as you can see. That was it. And I was pretty happy to complete both. Now let's move on to the language by language study recap. Alright, we're gonna start with Japanese. Let me put my glasses on because I wrote a lot actually for my study recaps. Right, so Japanese. My studying of Japanese during the month of April was a bit laid back, not gonna lie, because I must say I was focusing a lot more on Chinese and Russian this month regarding active studying specifically. I still kept going through the Shinkansen Master for N1 Kanji, so I'm done with now more than half of the textbook. I'm feeling way more comfortable with my Kanji knowledge now, so it's working wonders. I love this textbook and honestly, I don't even want to finish it because I'm just having a blast using it. Apart from Kanji study in April, I did read quite a lot, but I had one specific reading goal, which was to finish my Murakami short story collection, Onna no Inai Otokotachi. And actually, I wasn't able to finish it. I just kept on reading, so I didn't stop reading. It's just that I took a lot of time to go through each story, and I was reading a lot of manga on the side. I actually finished, I think, yeah, three manga books during April. So these are all part of broader collections, which I've been following. I've just continued 
reading the new manga coming out for the first two. And for the last one, I'm just continuing with the collections of stories from the premium edition box of the Ito Junji manga collection, which we have at home. I love these stories. I've been reading that, even though it's horror, I've been actually reading that before going to bed. It's been going great. And you know, these books are quite thick, even though it's manga, it's taking me a bit of time to go through them anyway. So yeah, that's what I've been reading. It's just that I wish I had been able to finish my short story collection. It's fine. It will just become a May goal instead. The reason why I want to read even more in Japanese than what I'm already doing is just because I have so many books in my TBR box at the moment, it's actually bad. And I've been on a no-buy rule for new books in Japanese for like two months already. And I don't know if you guys know this, but buying books in Japanese, I kind of need it for my inner balance. <laughs> you know, be able to browse books, go to libraries here in Japan. So that means I also need to read a lot more than what I'm doing right now. So I'm manifesting a good reading month for the month of May. Let's see if that actually happens. But for April, that's what I could read. Another thing I have been lacking energy to do is actually output practice in Japanese. So written output practice, so just writing practice or speaking practice. And definitely I've not been doing it enough for the month. I've only done it once, even though it was part of my goals for almost each week of the month. And I was kind of disappointed with myself here, especially since I felt my ability going down a bit, especially my speaking ability. So even though during the month of March and for my March recap, I was telling you guys that I was feeling much more confident with my Japanese speaking ability. I was explaining stuff much more coherently and even complex stuff were not scaring me anymore. Well, in April, my confidence just was very low with regards to this. There were some instances, there were some days when I really couldn't explain anything, even to my husband. I could really see it in my everyday life. The thing is, I've been actively studying two other languages on the side, so that's one thing. I haven't been sleeping very well, so it means that I'm running on low energy kind of all the time. This is all impacting my focusability. You know, everyday stuff that I say all the time, every single day, I don't really need to focus there. But when it comes to making proper sentences, I still need to focus. And I think it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly all right. It's just that when I can't really focus, then of course, my speaking ability is directly impacted. So right here is the reality of language learning, in my opinion. And we could make a whole other video about this topic, in fact. In April for my Japanese, another thing I've been doing was listening practice. I've done quite a bit of listening practice. You know, my technical listening videos. I actually found a new YouTube channel for my technical listening practice. And it is absolutely great because I'm always looking for longer videos touching on specific topics, mainly scientific and business oriented videos in the form of discussion between experts, if possible, and with lots of advanced vocab because that's what I need at my level now. And this new channel is basically filled with this kind of video. So I found a gold mine of Japanese listening immersion practice videos here. All right, Chinese now. So my month of April with Chinese was clearly focused on active studying. I mainly covered my textbook, the NHK textbook, because I really wanted to finish it, which I did. And then on top of that, I did a lot of reading practice in April. I did not manage to get a lot of listening immersion practice, which is something I want to focus on more during the month of May instead. But yeah, in April, it was more focused on active studying of the language, specifically sentence structure and grammar and reading immersion practice. Regarding active studying, like I said, I managed to complete the NHK textbook finally. And this textbook actually took me two years to finish because I started it in April 2022, which is extremely long for me. I think the most time I've taken to finish a study resource in the past was like nine months. So two years was definitely a first for me. The thing is, I haven't been studying with it like 
consistently. I've been studying with it on and off because last year, so last year 2023, around February, I want to say, I actually stopped studying Chinese altogether because I was preparing for the JLPTN one. So I focused on Japanese for the most part of the year. And actually until the end of that year, I did not do any active studying of Chinese. I only maintained it. So that's also why I took that much time to finish that textbook. Just to give a little bit of a recap, on that textbook in particular because I feel it was actually quite a good one. So the NHK Chuokugo Nyumon textbook is part of a very very big NHK textbook series. So they have these language textbooks on a lot of languages in fact and for Chinese they have this one in particular which I used and they have another one focused on grammar only from beginner level to advanced level. So I may or may not get it in the future. I'll see whether I actually need it because I have other textbooks to go through. It was a very useful textbook. It was written in Japanese entirely because it's meant for Japanese natives and it was quite helpful because it helped me make sense of the language based on my prior knowledge of Japanese because those two languages, Japanese and Chinese, Mandarin Chinese, actually resemble each other a lot. So it was very useful to me to be able to study Chinese in comparison with Japanese and it served its purpose. I do feel like I understand Chinese sentence structure a lot more now thanks to this textbook. So it gave me a good foundational knowledge of the language, which I'm very grateful for. If you're interested, I would recommend it to you if you're comfortable with Japanese, of course. Like I said, I also did Chinese reading practice and I managed to finish two stories on the Chinese. So the first one was the scary story called To Meet. I learned a lot of useful vocab and sentence structures thanks to it, so I actually really liked it. The second story was called Witch's Laws, and this one was a bit more peculiar with a bit rarer vocab, so not vocab that I'm going to use anytime soon, like how to say Prince Charming in Chinese. I don't think I'm going to say that anytime soon. It was still very interesting and I enjoyed it quite a lot, actually. And then I've also started reading the Three Kingdoms story, which is quite a long series of stories. Actually, I think it's divided in three parts on the app. It's an intermediate level story. And when I started reading it, I felt like there were too many vocab words that were a bit too difficult for me at this point in time. I actually wanted to focus on sentence structure instead of vocab because of this, I actually stopped reading it for now. Maybe I'll go back to it in the future. But for now, I just started stop reading it after chapter two of the first story just because I don't think it's what I want to focus on right now for my reading practice in Chinese. All right and finally Russian. Once again I had a blast studying Russian in April to be honest with you. I still love the language. I don't think it's going away now. And because I've been keeping a very very consistent daily practice studying the language because I'm studying with the Asimil textbook and the Asimil textbook prompts you to study every single day for at least 30 minutes. I feel like I've been studying Russian like all the time during the month of April, which is a great feeling. I'm not complaining at all. I've been really in touch with it, if you know what I mean. That's a really cool feeling. So like I said, I've spent most of my time actively studying the language. In any case, I can't do much more apart from listening immersion practice at the moment because my level is too low anyway. So I can only focus on active studying and specifically grammar because Russian grammar is a bit hard to grasp at the beginning. So I've just been focusing on that using the ASML textbook. I am now, I think I've finished week seven. It's been going great and the daily consistency is quite intense and it's a big goal in itself. So even though it only takes 30 to 45 minutes of my day each day, and even though I had no trouble keeping up with it, it's still quite intense. So that's the reason why I'm not really studying anything else apart from this textbook's material. 
But then, because the Ask Female method really prompts you to study every single aspect of the language, I think it's probably enough. And because it's bite size, it doesn't even feel like it's too much. I really like this method and I've been making a ton of progress. I I'm only at week seven, like I said. I feel already so much more confident with my knowledge of the language, which is still baby knowledge, don't get me wrong. But I feel like I can understand more and more and it just fills me with joy. I want to say that I've been very very flexible with my schedule when it comes to when during the day I study with the Asimil textbook. So I've been doing it in the mornings first thing, sometimes in the afternoons, sometimes in the evenings as well, before dinner or after dinner. It's just like, you know, I've been doing it whenever, as long as I'm doing it every day, doesn't really matter when I do it. I've been very, very flexible with it. So I just wanted to mention this as well. But you've seen that in the vlogs because in April, I actually vlogged quite a lot. So you've seen that I've been studying my Russian at any point <laughs> during the day. So that's been interesting as well. On top of that, I just finished off this practice book that I had been using for Russian too from the Asimil collection as well. So this was a practice book really for focused on Russian Cyrillic, how to write Russian both in capital letters and in cursive letters and it has really helped me with my cursive. I feel like my cursive now is looking fine thanks to this writing practice book so I loved it. Then finally the last two things I've been doing were listening immersion practice. I've been doing a lot of it for Russian. I think within my listening immersion practice for all three languages Russian was definitely at the top in terms of volume. I mostly listened to Russian in April. I'm understanding more more and more. I'm watching vlogs so it's not like it's you know difficult language difficult to understand most of the time it's quite easy to understand. I've been learning some words here and there. My motivation is growing every single day exponentially so I want to do it even more and finally I've also been using Duolingo on and off. You know my ultimate goal with Duolingo is just that I want to finish the Russian course that's pretty much it. So at the moment I think I'm not even halfway. I'm getting there but that's my ultimate goal. I don't have a specific timeline for this. I'm just going with the flow. I'm just doing it at a slower pace at the moment because I have the Asimil textbook which is taking me a bit of time. So when I want to do extra Russian studying or just practice for pronunciation or sentence structure then I use Duolingo. <laughs> Alright guys, so that will be it for my April language study recap. I hope you liked it. As always, don't forget to leave me in the comments how your month of April went regarding your language study or anything else for that matter. And since April ended and we are actually done with the first four months of the year, the first period of the year, I took this opportunity to review my yearly language goals and I will talk about this in a future video that will come out very soon on the channel because I actually revised my goals. Until then, I wish you the best of luck in your studies and I will see you in my next video on the channel. Bye bye! Matani!